This is part two of a three-part series on the new Giannis biography, Giannis, The Improbable Rise of an NBA MVP by Mirren Fader. Uh, part one, my mic was not turned on. I was a dummy and didn't have it on. But part two, now we got it going. So, so we're all good. Part one is about Giannis growing up in Greece and his time there uh, with his family, struggling to survive. He learns about basketball. He focuses on basketball to the point where he's able to to come to the NBA. Scouts take a chance on him. And, you know, the problems with having no papers and immigration and that whole mess, that's what part one is about. It's, it's like serious struggle. Part two now is going to be him coming to America and the history of the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, as someone who grew up in in southeast Wisconsin, this is like these. This is like the part where I kind of uh, experience Giannis. So, so this is really cool. I was born in 1988, and so my childhood was the 90s NBA, and which was like probably the best time. This was so magical, and I grew up on a farm in uh, rural Wisconsin. So I grew up in Racine County. Racine County is just south of Milwaukee County, and I-94 splits it in half. So, like, the west side of the uh, the county is more rural and country, and then the east has the city of Racine. So, out in the country, we never had cable. So, to watch to watch the NBA, there would be NBA on, M NBA on NBC, and they had this, like, epic coverage. You know that, like, theme song that goes... Uh, and uh, you'd watch like the Orlando Magic with Shaq and Penny, the Bulls, uh, Indiana Pacers, the Utah Jazz, Seattle Supersonics, like all these all these teams that were so good in the '90s. Uh, but everybody was a Jordan fan. Like at school as a kid, people wore. Michael Jordan jerseys and Brett Favre jerseys. That's that's what people wore, right? Um, and we didn't really have money for jerseys, so the jerseys I did have were hand-me-downs from the neighbor kid who helped us on the farm. So it was like an old like Sean Kemp jersey and a uh, Orlando Magic Shack jersey. Um, and it wasn't until one of my birthdays I got a Glenn Robinson jersey, the purple one, and that was so exciting because. Uh, well, everybody loved the Bulls and Jordan, you know, everybody loved Jordan and the Bulls, but then you also had like your local team too. And, and I loved uh, the Bucks. You would watch them on UPN. So UPN was this channel that, that had like Brewer games and Bucks games. And they had, what shows they had? Like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the Jamie Foxx show, the Waynes Brothers, uh, Moesha, all these awesome, all these awesome shows, and so you'd watch the Bucks, and you had John McLaughlin and Jim Paschke doing the doing the games, and I remember going to Bucks games, the, like the first ones I went to in the Bradley Center. Uh, my dad and I would go, and we would park, and he used to work also for a restoration company besides the highway department, um, aside from farming. So he'd show me like buildings where he worked and stuff. So it was an interesting part growing up in rural Wisconsin, but also being so close to Milwaukee because you just shoot up I-94 25 minutes and then you're there. After the games, we would go to the Hyatt, my dad and I, and uh, he would take me, we'd take the elevator up to the top and there'd be this like rotating restaurant. So we'd go up there and just like look out the window and just rotate and like all those special memories and, and the bucks were never good until 2001. Uh, and that was just an awesome year with Ray Allen, Glenn Robinson, Sam Cassell, <laughs> Urban Johnson, <laughs> yeah, Urban Johnson. Oh man, um, I remember getting a towel, like a, a white towel that says "This is our house," and that thing hung up in my bedroom since I I left home. Uh, I live in Chicago now, and there are a lot of Wisconsin transplants living in in the city. So there's there's a natural community of Wisconsin folk that are around, and uh, we find a way to. <laughs> To see each other. You see people wearing Giannis jerseys all the time now. It's great. What I loved about like this part and these chapters is he comes to the Bucks and it's his, his rookie season. So uh, Karan Butler is, he has a lot of quotes from Karan Butler, 
where there are a lot of quotes from Karan Butler in here. And Karan Butler is from Racine, where I'm from, like that county. But he's he's just like a he's an icon in the area. Um, I actually so during college I would uh, come back and work for my neighbor's carpet installation company uh, during the summer summer and winter breaks. And one time we we put carpeting in Karan Butler's mom's house in Racine. That's how local he is. And there's like nothing in the house. It was a pretty modest house. It had a pool, indoor indoor pool. And uh, there was like nothing around. And then in one of the closets, we did like three of the bedrooms. And in one of the closets, she had like four Karan Butler bobbleheads of like all the teams he's been on. (laughs) Random. But uh, so Karan Butler is in here and... He's such an icon to the southeast Wisconsin area. And one of my favorite ones. So this like this part, Giannis is experienced in America coming from nothing. And now he has all this money, but he's still very frugal about it. There's a story about him. He used the same pair of shoes. You get a, you get a new pair of shoes every single game. 82. And he used the same ones for five months. And then it started started like tearing apart he wanted to get them fixed <laughs> but they're like no no just we're doing but he, he collected all the ones uh so that he could have his house look like mtv cribs <laughs> don't you guys love Giannis? i mean if you're watching this video chances are you're a big bucks fan and you love Giannis, and we've been following his journey for over eight years now and it's like you probably feel like he's a a younger brother to you um and it's so special to see this growth and you turn into these national media outlets and it's really apparent how clueless they are about Giannis and his story it's his work ethic greatness isn't random and Giannis works so hard to get to the point where he is. It seems celebrated and everything. But he also has, there's all these different sides of Giannis when you're reading it. There's the like serious, focused, hardworking Giannis. Then there's the, just the, such a goofy, such a goofy guy. And then there's also the very emotional one where he cries a lot. They talk a lot about how he cries all the time. And it was weird coming into the NBA he'd make mistakes and then cry and the hyper masculine NBA would be like, you can't, Giannis, you can't be really doing that anymore. Um, But to him, he was crying because he has to get better no matter what to get his family here. That's what's most important. So when he gets a place, he has a three bedroom and he sets up the other two bedrooms for his family for them to come and he becomes really lonely because his family's not here and their visas get denied twice and luckily herb cole he was a senator i don't know exactly what happened but john Kerry is mentioned who was the secretary of state it might have gone up like that high to make this happen and you really think about like the immigrant uh the immigration system it's just so full of red tape anyways so Giannis is here and the, the he there's all these videos of him doing all these <laughs> experiencing all these things for the first time and uh the pr department for the bucks had to make sure not to not to make sure he comes across as naive you know you don't want you don't want it to look like a parody of coming to America, even though he like watched this. And then he would learn all these new words. And uh, like him and Ursan Ilyasova, they like electronic music, but they would, everybody else would just shut it down and play hip hop in the locker room. Uh, there's so many great stories in here. Um, everybody, they would just beat up on him on practice, but he would just bounce back up every time. He was so he was so raw but there was so this intensity about him was just signaling how special he was going to be i'm I'm looking to see if there's a lot of things about like don't be don't become americanized he doesn't have an ego like americans do um 
Nope, Giannis said, shaking his head. No matter how big I get, no matter if I become a superstar, I will always be looking for deals. I always am going to be me. So the Bucks staff, it's apparent how much the staff is trying to support Giannis. Uh, they assign one of the video coordinators to just like watch over him and uh, take care of him, do everything with him. So he became a really good friend with Giannis. There's this one point where a staffer is in his apartment and Giannis had a jar full of Oreos. And then the next day at practice, Giannis goes, hey, did you, did you eat some of my Oreos? I had 30 and now I'm missing three. And the dude was like, oh, holy cow. He's got millions and millions of dollars and he's counting his Oreos because that's how he grew up. Everything was like, it can be taken away from you at any moment. And, and that's very, uh, very ingrained in him. There's this hilarious quote. I'm trying to find it. What page is it on? I found this part in the book to be hilarious. The first time he got his check from the Bucks, he asked Butler, how do I get them to not take taxes out? <laughs> Butler laughed. Welcome to the NBA. <laughs> what I love too, it's so like, what does it call that? Inside baseball? It's so localized. Like I know all the things that they're talking about. They mentioned the malls, Southridge Mall and Mayfair Mall. Now growing up, there were like three different malls that we'd go to. Once you get your license, you drive around, you have some freedom, you wanna meet girls. At least that's what I wanted to do. And in Racine was Regency Mall. So we'd go there and then Southridge was in the 414. Racine County, that's the 262, the Scylla. That's what uh, we're all about. And then Mayfair, Mayfair would be like, you know, the girls you meet there, those are some like Abercrombie and Fitch type of girls. So it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> they mentioned the balls in the book. It's so funny to me. Giannis apparently is a terrible driver. He drives really, really fast. Uh, everybody call him Bambi in practice. Coach, what is Bambi? It's a baby deer. No, coach, no. I am not a baby deer. I am not Bambi. <laughs> he loved the Ellen DeGeneres show, Justin Bieber, <laughs> coming to America. Oh, man. He was so concerned with having a cool American haircut. <laughs> you just, you saw his competitive nature and how he wanted to be great. Something I didn't mention in part one is him and his friends would buy like internet tokens and get on the internet and watch NBA highlights. So he loved Allen Iverson. He loved Kevin Durant and LeBron and uh, Kobe. And he would just watch highlights. And Something I've noticed when going to Bucks games, just growing up, is how... Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, his numbers were tired up there. And then you see the 71 NBA champions banner. And it was always curious to me why there weren't more, right? Like if what I've learned about basketball since a kid, the two greatest basketball players of all time are Kareem and Michael. Those two. Like those are the two best players. And if we had one of those best players, like what, what happened? I don't really know about that. And then you learn more that they traded all these players to get Jabbar. Uh, the Lakers did. And he didn't want to be here and he went to LA and there must have been some friction. And there's also kind of like that strangeness of he was Lou Alcindor and then Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, and as a kid, you don't really understand any of that. Um, and in the book, the book really leans into... Milwaukee being the small market, run like a mom and pop shop. Everything's deteriorating, deteriorating and breaking down. Jabbar was a superstar. He left, so there's this kind of hangover of no one ever wants us. Uh, no superstars are gonna want to play here. They were good in the '80s, and they had the Mecca, the Mecca court, and it was this like pop art design as a court. It was an art piece by Robert Indiana. He was a pop artist. Um, in the 90s, they were bad. And then you have, you know, Ray Allen, Glenn Robinson, that crew. And then, you know, we had Bogut, then he's injured. Ah, oh, man, I remember that elbow injury. That was bad. Michael Red. They really, they really talk about Herb Cole as just being, he just wants the team to be competitive, right? So just get in the playoffs, basically. And never really building it from the ground up and never really taking big swings and superstars don't want to come here. And I think that's, 
I think when we drafted Giannis, I remember talking to my brother about this, but we kind of have to build our teams differently than other teams. We're not going to draw those big free agents or superstars. Kind of have to be like the San Antonio Spurs have been. And really, we've seen other Wisconsin teams be successful at this, where just get get high character people, hard workers that prioritize winning over everything. Um, and I think there's too much entitlement with American players. You should try to get foreign players that are more grateful and will take this opportunity and go with it. And Giannis is the example of this. Yeah, so part two, there's just all these great quotes from former players, uh, you know, Michael Carter Williams and staff members and, and Luke Rittenauer <laughs> is getting featured and... Oh, man. What a time. So then at the very end, they talk about uh, the the arena, trying making sure that it stays in Milwaukee. And to Herb Cole's uh, credit, he really wanted Milwaukee to stay. He didn't want to be known for you know them leaving. So, so it kind of ends with Larry Drew, who was kind of like a father figure to Giannis. He really supported Giannis. To Jason Kidd, who who I read a little bit later on, and uh, he's really hard nosed on Giannis. He's not that empathetic type of coach for him. Uh, so part two is him transitioning to the NBA and to America, and just getting adjusted, and still trying to get his parents over. And then finally they do, and then there's a lot more hope. And um, yeah, yeah. I, I think we know where uh, it, it's cool to just see these progressions, right? As a fan, you've seen you've seen all these steps that he's taken, and and now he's a champion, and uh, it's so great, isn't it? Oh man, what a what a guy! Um, mentioned Jordan before. I I seriously think he's on route to be as iconic as MJ uh, globally. The last Bucks game I went to was in Paris, January 2020. Uh, I see when I go to games at Pfizer, people are from around the world in my row, and they're there to see Giannis, and they get to see the city of Milwaukee and the Midwest and, and learn about the culture we have there. So I wanted to see how people in Europe uh, reacted to Giannis. Sure, you know, Paris has got good art and history, but... But Giannis is what got me to go there. And I'm in the row. The guy to my left, he, he flew in from Frankfurt, Germany for the game. And then he was going to fly back. The guy to my right, he was a Bulls fan because his dad would show him highlights of MJ when he was a kid. And seeing them, he they didn't play that well. They were playing the Charlotte Hornets. But once he dunked, everybody was, was going nuts. It's cool to see that. And getting there, I got there like on time, and all the Bucks gear is sold out. There's just Charlotte Hornet stuff left, and who wants that, right? Europeans didn't, right? Um, and you can see what a global superstar can do for your city. And going to the championship parade, my cousin calls me up the night before. Says, "Hey, come come to the parade with me tomorrow." All right, so we get there. And just seeing the Deer District and the arena and just the energy. I've never felt more connected to the city of Milwaukee than I did that day. Because um, I've been living in Chicago. I haven't lived in, in Milwaukee, but I support all the, the teams. And Giannis is a big reason, the biggest reason why all of that exists. Because of his work ethic and his determination and focus and his ability to be resilient and overcome adversity and, and get over loneliness and to keep learning. He starts off as so raw, right? But he just gets better and better and better and, and is truly inspiring.